Well guys, it's been several months since I've done one of these, so I decided to finally do one again. Here is a brand new Victoria 2 tutorial. And in this video, I wanted to talk about civilization, I mean, um, civs and uncivs and how do you westernize. As I get the tab right here, as you can see. In the game, there are two types of countries. Civilized and uncivilized, or as they're called in the games, civ and unciv. Now, you can easily find out by here on the civilization level ranking. Now, there's also different groups of countries in the game. The first on the list is the Great Powers. Top 8 civilized countries in the world based upon score. Then after them, as we get this organized, it's the next The next 8 best civilized countries in the game are secondary powers. And then after that, it's all the other um, civilized countries, and then it's all the uncivilized. I see the rank go all the way down to uncivs. So, what's the difference between all of them? Of course, great powers and secondary powers are special kind of civ um, civs that get special benefits. Great powers get more benefits than secondary powers, though, but both get more benefits than civilized. Whereas Western uncivilized countries are not in good shape. All of the countries in the Americas and Australia, New Australia and um, Oceania area, I mean to say, are civilized. Every country in Europe, except for Crimea, if you release them as Russia, is civilized. They're uncivilized. In in um, Africa, every country in Africa except for the European powers, Transvaal, Orange, and South Africa, if you release them, are un are civilized. I mean, uncivilized. The rest of them are. In Asia, all the countries there, except for the great powers, I mean, I'm not, the European powers, I mean to say, and Philippines, if they're released, are um, uncivilized. Now... I'm playing as Japan in order to explain this a little bit better how it works. So, what happens when you're uncivilized? Well, there's actually some benefits, actually. One, as I see go to attack Korea, you can't see it right here, but uncivilized countries have a massive speed increase in justifying, see right there, an 80% speed increase. On top of it, if you change your government to jingoism, which Japan doesn't have, uncivilized countries have an 80% speed increase in um, making um, Kazabeli. So conquering is much, much faster, which is also good because that means you're less likely to get caught. So, yeah, that's good. But there's also another benefit of being uncivilized. And it's actually, I think, kind of exploitive. That really shouldn't be in a game, but it is. Um... You can't go bankrupt as a great pa as an uncivilized. Normally in the game, if you ha have a deficit, as you see right here, which right now Japan currently has, when you hit zero and you have a deficit, you take out debt right here. And of course, it adds interest and all that, and you have to pay off the debt. I believe was if your interest gets more than all the revenue you can make, you go bankrupt automatically. And that is something that you do not want at all costs. It is very, very bad to be um bank go bankrupt. If you watch my Ottoman Empire play for right now, you saw what happened to me in my war recently. I gotta get back to that game, but that's what I'm talking about. That is how breaking it is. But uncivilized countries cannot go bankrupt. So you can fund everything, you can set your taxes as low as possible, you can fund everything. Make a massive deficit and you'll still be fine. Now it's actually exploitable because you can fund education as much as you want. So you get this increase of literacy without the worry about running out of money. Now there is a catch to it though. If you want to build stuff and if you don't have money, they won't build. So if you're doing this exploit while you're trying to build stuff, it's not going to work. You need to make money before you can build stuff. So keep that in mind. But... There are massive problems for them. And that is, you can't build factories, you can't build a bunch of stuff, you can't research. So that means you're going to be technologically backwards as the game goes on unless you can catch up with text and eventually civilize. 
and you can't attack civilized countries in most circumstances, especially to take territory from them. And you're just at risk, I mean, just less likely to survive. You have to westernize. Now, how do you westernize? Well, you gain research points a day, but instead of using research, I mean, using points to research stuff, as you go right here, you use them, oops, wrong one. You go to reform tab, and you can't do reforms. Instead, you get reforms to westernize. So, as you can see, I'll go here, early Meiji restoration, which is a unique event Japan has. If you press on this, it will give you 30% research modifier, but it will unlock economic, I mean land reform in the economic reform page. Let's go back over here. Here we go. There are two pages you can do, military reforms and economic reforms. Most times, economic military reforms are the cheapest because the, mil the government usually supports them, whereas military, I mean economic reforms have less support. But, in most circumstances, economic reforms are almost always better so it's better to save your points and get these so when you pick a reform as you can see right here like i'm looking at foreign tra train methods when you press on it you'll do you'll get 10 percent land organization you'll get research conquest bonus which means you'll get more research points if you conquer but you'll see this thing called civilization progress which means you'll get 10% closer to westernizing. So if I took that, I'll go to 10% right here. So I had 90% more to go. And once you hit 100%, you can westernize. You gain 10 points. And of course, if you're playing Japan, it's almost guaranteed you'll be a secondary power, if not outright a great power once you civilize. So you gotta increase your research points to get reforms to get in order to um get reforms and westernize. Now, there is some massive problems, though. Plus, one, it takes a long time. Japan is the quickest of all the civilized countries to civilize because of the unique events and their literacy and all that. But there is one problem with westernizing. As you can see, when I'm looking at the um, reform right here. As you see, the liberals, conservatives, and reactionaries really, really hate it when you do the reforms. And especially reactionaries. And if you do reforms, there's a good chance... You'll have a reactionary uprising to try and stop the reforms. And if they take, like any rebellion, if they take over the capital and hold it for two months, all your reforms will go back to where they were, a good chunk of them. So you have to restart all over again. So try to have troops in your capital to hopefully prevent a rebellion from being out of control. Because you do not at all want to be forced to restart. If that happens, you're better off restarting completely because that is a game breaker if you lose all that progress. But like I said, all in almost all circumstances, go for economic reforms, like ec land reform. This gives you more money. Administration reform makes um, administrate um, bureaucrats do better, which makes you, which causes you to make more money. Finance reform makes gives you more tax efficiency, which makes more money. Education reform, this is really good, makes um literacy go up higher. Railroads gives you better farming and mine efficiency, more money, and can increase your RGO pelt when you build railroads, because this automatically builds railroads in your capital province. Early industrialization. These two right here are the only ways you can build factories as uncivs. These two right here. Otherwise, you have to be civilized in order to do them. Now, this one in particular is really confusing. As you see right here, it says, enact financial reform costs Fifteen mean, increases your civilization progress to 15% and international debt increases to 35%. Now you're probably thinking, okay, it says 35%, which means it'll get me 35% of the way there. But actually, what is, it dub, it, it's a 20% increase on the civilization rank of financial reform. So it's not a 35%, it's actually a 20% increase. I really wish they specified that in the game because that is very confusing and many people including me have had that happen where hey shouldn't I get 35% but I got way less than that and it really fucked me over they need to change that so it's specified hey this is 20% not 35 20 but yeah that's what you gotta do to civilize you just gotta get as much clergy increase your literacy as much as possible which incurs me of course <coughs> will get more research points which you use to unlock reforms, and when you unlock, when you get enough points, the hammer right here will light up green, so then you can do a reform. Now, in Japan's case, go for foreign weapons right off the bat, so you can unlock 
um, infantry, but most other countries go for the economic reforms. It's worth it to save it. Wait longer to get the reforms needed for this because this will help you out in the long run. So that's how you civilize in Victoria 2. So hope you've hope this tutorial helped you out. See you guys next time.